again. My name is Vladimir and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, BAM. Maybe some of you were, was uh, at Meta Refresh and you already know something, but uh, still I'm going to make a quick overview of uh, what we have there. So BAM stands for Block, Element and Modifier. And uh, the main idea of it is to provide possibility to um, have uh, your project built from the uh, parts which are absolutely independent uh, from each other and um, that's why they are very easy to uh, reuse. Then I think uh, all of you are uh, at least a bit familiar with Twitter Bootstrap, yes? Uh, then we can uh, compare it to um, bootstrap way and uh, BAM way of development. So uh, when you're trying to develop with a bootstrap, uh, first thing you should do, you think about your project structure. And that's the way you start just every new project then you should find all the HTML of the components you need to use in your project inside the bootstrap library. Then you uh, uh, may uh, find all the styles which there are in a bootstrap library or you may uh, collect the pieces you need for your project. But in that case you should uh, get back uh, and uh, take all the rest pieces when you go going to add new components. The same is with the scripts. And uh, when you uh, want to customize something, you just edit uh, the code you get from the bootstrap. Uh, next, when you want to maybe reuse some of the components, you should uh, get back, uh, find the proper way part of the HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And maybe there are some parts which um, are not necessary in the new place where you're going to reuse that component. And uh, the worst thing is uh, when the bootstrap is updated. You are to check everything. Well, in general you have three options. The first one, the easiest, is never to update. Maybe uh, it's uh, good for someone, but uh, um, all the projects should be developed, I think, and uh, mm, that's not our case. And the next variant is uh, to go and uh, just compare uh, all the commits from the previous version find what was changed and uh, repeat these changes into your project in every place where they were again HTML, JavaScript, CSS, etc. And uh, let's compare it to the BAM way. Uh, where with the very beginning you get uh, optimal file structure. Of course you can customize it uh, the way you want but still you don't need to think about it every time. Uh, then uh, you edit the config file where you place uh, links to the libraries you want to use and um, you never uh, ever change any uh, of the files from that libraries. Uh, all the changes are going into your project level. Uh, so in that case uh, all the components are very easy to reuse. Um, and uh, also we do not um, put uh, some technologies of the blocks into different folders. If we have one uh, particular component, all the things it uses are in the same folder. So uh, layout, uh, CSS, JavaScript, maybe markdown, images, uh, documentation, everything uh, what is uh, about this block will be there. You can just take it and move everywhere you want. Uh -huh. And um, 
The main uh, greatest thing is when library updates, you don't need to do just anything. You, uh, it's as easy as just to reload the page and uh, it will automatically get updates from the repositories where library is and uh, your project will be rebuilt with that updates. I think it's absolutely great thing. And um, uh, just a quick few things about them. Uh, it's not just a methodology of how you should uh, uh, place your files of your project, but uh, it's also a bunch of tools and uh, the whole uh, front-end platform. Uh, also, uh, the tools are not about just uh, compile your project. Uh, there are a lot of uh, optimizers which are quite unique. For example, our CSS optimizer uh, um, makes some structural optimizations too, which is, uh, I think, absolutely unique feature. And um, uh, we have our own template engine. We uh, were fans of um, uh, XSLT pr processor and um, the few things uh, was not good there. It's a very expressive language, I think, but uh, oh, it's not so easy to learn and um, it's um, not developing now and rather slow. Uh, so we uh, have written our own template engine on top of JavaScript, it runs Node.js and it's uh, uh, the same powerful as XSLT. And uh, one more feature is uh, block libraries. Um, when you created some blocks, uh, you can uh, place them into a separate, let's call it uh, just folder for right now and uh, link uh, into uh, various projects you're working on and all these projects will use that blocks and for example absolutely different team can develop these uh, mm, libraries while you're uh, working on a particular project and uh, you won't uh, so it's a way to maybe split the teams or add more people to develop without uh, any troubles to uh, get all the code into the production at the end and there are actually much more things but uh, we will never have time to take everything, even if we will stay here for a few days. Okay, um, as I have mentioned, uh, all blocks are independent and, and that's why reusable. Uh, optimizers uh, provide us the optimal runtime and um, uh, that's uh, that's why uh, the whole uh, BAM is kind of large thing, but it is uh, fractal in a way. So you may use just a few parts of it, which are great just for your project. You don't need to use it as the whole. Well, you may, but it is not uh, absolutely required. Okay, I think it's a good time now. Uh, for those of you who want to try it right now, you may uh, get some instructions and get tools, but I will show everything just in console. And the other information and the link also is at bam.info website. Feel free to check it out.
Okay. So here we are. <coughs> That's just an empty folder, and I'm going to check out the project stuff. For that, let's go to a GitHub slash bam slash project stuff and get the link. Here we are. So git checkout. What? Clone, sorry. And go there. Here we need to install dependencies, so npm i. And while it will do that, okay, it's not so big. Anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to switch into uh, Sublime, so it doesn't matter. Um, meetup, project stop, Sublime here. Yeah, so here are the files we get with our project stop. Uh, here you can see package JSON with uh, just one. dependency it is a uh, pen tools then some common blocks blocks which are used just for a desktop for example you may it's not so big I think and is it possible to zoom into the left panel you knows or yeah. It's not okay. Is it visible for you? Okay. And uh, the main file uh, here is inside desktop bundles, and you may think of it like a pages folder. And uh, here is index and index.pmjson.js. Uh, it's a declaration of the page. Uh, the syntax is uh, kind of a JSON, but uh, some fields of it are predefined and uh, a bit special. By the way, the page itself is uh, also a block, and it uh, consists of other blocks. Uh, and uh, here is a declaration. I think all this stuff here is quite self-descriptive yeah let's look at this part but to save some time I will ask BAM tools to build everything for us and start BAM server and then go to here it is going to get all the libraries from GitHub and uh, make all the rest. While well, it's working, let's get a closer look here. So, we have a uh, declaration of header and uh, some content. The same for block called content and its own content, then footer and some text. Uh, then we may create new folder inside desktop.blocks and call it for example header then we're going to create uh, the files of any technology this uh, block will use for example let be CSS file we may say it should be the height of 200 and let it be background gray for example. Alright, here goes the 
result of the building this particular declaration index on JS. You can see now it is just a very simple HTML page where all blocks are just divs with a special class and it, uh, there's content inside. Then we just uh, reload the page and I think we can ask BAM server not to check out the libraries each time for now it will be a bit faster a bit ugly hack yeah so the CSS was updated and uh, looking into this declaration um, BAM build system knows that we should go into all the block levels uh, we use in, in our project and look into the folders with the same name and build all the technologies uh, which we are going to build. All of them are here. You may add anything you want. Uh, Let's try the same thing with the uh, template. Uh, we're going to use uh, BAM, BAM HTML. So, block header, and for example, we may make it, I don't know, maybe attack hello, why not? see it changed we may change almost everything here and moreover we may add some content or maybe this way let's no, no. We think that any block uh, may appear on a page uh, multiple times, so uh, with ID it's not possible. And uh, uh, actually there are no any uh, use of it, so uh, uh, you just don't uh, have any situation when you really uh, need that uh, ID. CSS was created, uh, BAM build understood that we need to import its CSS file into the page uh, CSS. And the next step, we get it just flattened. So it doesn't matter, thank you, it doesn't matter how many blocks will be there. Uh, all of them will be flattened with Borshik and uh, we in production environment uh, it will be optimized. Uh, let's get back into template for a while. So here you can see that I created element of uh, that header block and call it logo. Then I'm going to uh, also show the content of the hello block itself so I use this CTX content 
and again I'm going to refresh the page now you see that that header uh, logo element appears and the content still here but we don't need to uh, say anything about it into in our declaration file but uh, I'm not going to uh, talk more about uh, templates because it's uh, another rather big topic let's go further okay I think we can try to write just some basic JavaScript block and then we will try to get more complex one from a library well I think we can create just some square and declare that it will use some JavaScript also let's add some CSS for it and I think it could be for example That's it. Absolutely any. All we need to do is uh, they should be the same in declaration and in block folder so it also should be square anything and again the CSS file should be the same name where is it? here it is I think it needs some background also remove active job okay I think that will help yeah and where is it now it's still square because I didn't change it in no what the problem square notice the problem maybe I didn't save it Okay, let's create the JavaScript for it. Uh, to write uh, JavaScript the same way as we used to with CSS, uh, we created some uh, special block helper called ibamjs, and um, the purpose of it is to provide a possibility uh, to again uh, redefine some 
properties or methods from the blocks uh, get it from library on the level of our current project sure um, the documentation is not quite good right now but uh, there is um, very I think descriptive uh, JS doc so bam bam bl yeah here it is until we will uh, create some better piece of documentation you may refer into just its code to know about it okay let's get back and write some JS so we provide uh, um, them as a Uh, yeah, mm, like a namespace for all the blocks and uh, JS blocks uh, may be with or without uh, DOM nodes connected to it so for abstract blocks without any DOM node for some helpers we may declare uh, th such blocks with uh, bam.decal but for blocks with uh, DOM representation we use pam.dom.decal which inherits from uh, abstract blocks and it is just an element of uh, the same IBAM block here it is and it uh, provides us some additional methods to work with DOM that's the name of our block then goes methods of the each particular entity and um, here we may describe what should happen when block gets or lose uh, some modifiers and the very uh, first modifier each block will get uh, is uh, JS in um, with value in needed. It uh, happens automatically when we uh, describe the block with that uh, JS true key. So we may say on set mod JS. needed we should fire the function which may do something hello dot js let's check it out yeah here we can say hello and now uh, this square anything uh, also has modifier js with the value in needed and uh, some special parameters uh, inside on click attribute uh, we use them to uh, let javascript know uh, some variables from the declaration for example something and we can get it with uh, these params dot something Here it is. 
Okay, let's try to ask this red square <laughs> doing something, at least something. Uh, we may uh, provide some event listening on it with uh, this dot bind to method and here we need to say which event we're going to listen um, I think it could be click and the function I think we can just add some modifier to that block when whenever user click it so this method is set mod and it takes uh, three parameters but the first one is optional and is used to set modifiers for elements of the block we're going to set modifier just on block itself I think active maybe state active and then when we will click that block we may see that it gets modifier state with the value active then we may describe what to do when it gets this modifier Let's move that square to the right, maybe. This dot tom lm. It's just a link to jQuery object uh, representing our block. also describe what to do when this modifier disappears and in that case we can change it not to just uh, set that modifier uh, but to toggle it this way you can see that uh, the block gets modifier state active and we click again modifier was removed and it fires uh, that function uh, each block may have a lot of uh, special methods it may be anything you want for yeah sure yeah it is a modifier and uh, it has some values for example value active Or no, no. Any, it can be any modifier. Absolutely, any, but uh, just this one is predefined. It is uh, fired automatically when uh, this that block is uh, initiated with JavaScript. Okay, uh, we also may. Um, look at how uh, modifiers works with CSS for example uh, we can have modifier state with um, 
Okay. Okay, I think yeah, we can make it a bit easier and write CSS for modifier just in place. State active background. It's not a kind of magic, but still it's the way to build projects which are easy to uh, maintain in the future. And uh, all the um, users of your library uh, who don't need uh, that block with uh, state active, they just need some very abstract basic uh, things, uh, will just not uh, use that piece of code and uh, what I was uh, intended to do is to create a separate file for that modifier and in that case that code uh, uh, even won't uh, ever build into the project but uh, I think that uh, just something very so do you mean if I put a separate file for the uh, actually, it will if uh, it declaration will be at the bamjson.js file. Uh, I can show you. There are a few ways to add some entities into the result build. Just move it from here. Where is it? So, in the case when you add this uh, modifier into declaration, it will appear at the very beginning automatically and it will move to the right side without any clicks no oh yeah that's because um, it should be fired when that modifier will be uh, uh, sorry my English is not so well uh, when that modifier appears in the uh, runtime. No, something. Oh, yeah, it works. But uh, for the situation when uh, there is no need to um, make that state active uh, from the very beginning, we can remove it from declaration and in that case uh, we need somehow uh, to tell the build system that we need that uh, CSS with the state active to be built and for that we use a special file with the uh, depths.js extension and Shoot tabs on state active. Um, and let me explain how the build works. The first uh, and uh, starting point of the uh, build is uh, index.bam.json.js. Um, BAM tools uh, parse all the entities here and then uh, create uh, 
bam tackle.js file where all of them are in the list and when we rebuild our page we see that uh, there is no uh, any mention of uh, that active yes modifier so the next step is to look all over the levels we use on the project and find all the blocks uh, devs.js files and include all the entities which are uh, mentioned there and on that step we get a uh, file called uh, page name dot .js and uh, here you can see all the dependencies of our project and the final step is to build all these technologies which have uh, used in runtime um, from the all the uh, level block levels according to that uh, page name dot uh, dot js file and all of them are in the some kind of imports for CSS it's just uh, at import itself then for JS we have a special includes which works with Borshik and then all of them are flattened uh, if it is still clear uh, we may go deeper and uh, I want to show you one maybe at least one person here will be happy to know that we already have in our BAMBL library one special block just a moment I will find it I think it's somewhere here no okay history it should be common I was there nope oh I think I know what's wrong that was not that branch yeah, yeah. so here it is and uh, this is uh, a block called iLocation and it's written uh, with bam.tackle notation and what it's doing is uh, using another block which it depends on and It is uh, also an element of IG query block. No? Yeah, again. is writing something I think right now <laughs> well um, I was talking about uh, we use a special block allocation which uh, uses uh, an element of the block IG query um, history and uh, the author is Benjamin Lopton and uh, I think he stopped <laughs> writing right now <laughs> I couldn't see the head for in the way. Okay, now it's. Uh, I think you already know what's going on here. 
but uh, what is interesting it is the way we using it it's uh, yet another uh, BAM blog written in with the help of uh, IBM JS and it calls uh, some methods of uh, IG query element history so you can see methods actually quite a lot of them to work with history IP and as I promised I'm going to show you how to use some external libraries actually we already using it but it is I got a general question. Yeah, uh, sure. So uh, it, it is very clear that there are no technical limitations in LA because it's CSS, it's, it's JavaScript. Uh, we can go anywhere from here. But what are the process limitations? Like uh, initially you mentioned with Bootstrap, you can't really easily update. Uh, you can update the library, right? That's a process limitation. Technically, it's not a limitation. Like I can still get what I want with Bootstrap, but it's a process limitation. So uh, clearly here, uh, learning curve is a process limitation. I, I should really go convince all the developers to start using it. But what other process limitations do we have? Uh, or is there any process limitation? Well, ma if I uh, <coughs> understood your question right, uh, the first one is uh, you need to use Node.js uh, to build the project then as you have said learning curve is quite high for the whole um, bunch of uh, BAM tools but still uh, you can start with some parts of it and um, maybe it takes a bit more time to build your project because of a lot of uh, things the build system should check out to create that final runtime files uh, but it doesn't matter for production where you again uh, gets just um, rendered files uh, it's the same as static uh, site generator uh, for example or maybe uh, of course uh, dynamic but uh, s CSS JavaScript and all that stuff will be pre-generated for you and as for not to edit uh, files from libraries I'm going to show you how you can work with it Okay, the first thing we should do is to add the link to that library here and I'm going to add carousel which is also a github repo it's me <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> so here I added one more link. Then I can just restart my server and on the next reload of the page that library will be checked out from the GitHub somewhere here I think. Well, I don't 
seat. Why? You forget to command the parser zone. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, then uh, Bentools tried to uh, install dependencies for each library and it should yeah it says that there is no any package json so there is uh, no dependencies for that library i think i will do it as it was and now i also need to add that levels from this library into my project and uh, here's the folder of that library and there is just one uh, block level called uh, blocks dash desktop and now i can just remove our red square and add declaration of the carousel So, as you can see, I uh, don't care for CSS or JavaScript files to uh, get this block working. Uh, all of them are here, and you may see that this block also has few elements. It is mg element and control element with the uh, modifier called theme with the value default all these files were built for me uh, with the help of this declaration and the content of the uh, each item itself are described here again S also uh, there is uh, nothing about uh, what HTML it should uh, uh, be rendered uh, and uh, you may see that for example carousel element IMG is uh, IMG tag but well its name is mg2 so it's maybe not so descriptive okay let's let's make the carousel itself carousel oh yeah. carousel inner to be ul element and uh, each item to be a lie. We won't edit any file inside carousel library, but uh, we're going to uh, add the same block on our project level. that its lm called inner should be ul and its lm called 
item should be li. The library is as is, but uh, everything changed. And um, it doesn't matter if the developers of library will get there and change some layout. Your changes will apply on top of it. And the same with uh, CSS or JavaScript. Uh, the code from library will uh, stay this as it was, and your code will uh, just uh, redefine what was on the bottom levels and moreover you may uh, have as many as you want such levers levels on your project and uh, for this particular one we already have a few of them here the very basic level is from BMBL library and it's called common. Then goes desktop, then we just added carousel desktop level. Then this is library contains code for our template in engine and common blocks from current lab project and desktop blocks. We may add as many as we want. Well, we were going to talk more about JS. Let's try to do so. Again, Phantom Tackle. And let's check out what methods this block already has. Um, there is some initialization part then it has method cycle method to to switch to the particular slide pause next prev slide and get default params to apply some initial values uh, yeah. so Let's decide what we can redefine, or maybe we can just add something. Yeah, let's look how it could be. We can say on set mod JS. We want to. Okay, for the very beginning, we can overwrite uh, the code from the library it is very easy so uh, in this case and um, this block won't work but it will just say haha in the console now nothing works because all the initialization from the library was overwritten by this console log but uh, we can use some kind of inheritance here and call the uh, super method uh, that's this base And now uh, it works, and also we has that console log working too. So the code from the library is merged with the code from our project without uh, changing anything uh, within the library code. Uh, we may add any methods here. and 
and also this way so again we added something and uh, we don't need to uh, in, in any way interfere with the source code of the library to add more methods or properties Well, I think you should have some questions. <laughs> nope. Everything is clear here. If we want to use any uh, other library plugin, which is not available in the web library, will we have to convert in this format? Uh, actually, no. Uh, you can just place them as the blocks and uh, we decided to call them like um, an elements of the i jQuery block but it doesn't matter for example tell any jQuery plugin you want we can just add it here any name You can see it here. It's just plain external file, but uh, you may want to build it as well as uh, all the project blocks files. And in that case, uh, you can go this way. I don't know what it is, but working I <laughs> okay let's try this one maybe more luck nope okay I know Tell any jQuery plugin, anyone. Nobody knows any jQuery plugin.
here you can see that the file inside is not changed it is just as is but um, when you include the declaration of it into your project uh, it will be built as uh, just the same way as all the blocks are built uh, all the way any other questions I think uh, just the same way the uh, only thing you need is just to uh, provide the same class names and for JavaScript you also need uh, to teach your uh, template engine to generate just a moment I'll show uh, these pieces inside on click and also uh, we use uh, mix with uh, the IBM block to let uh, JavaScript know that it should be initialized on this particular DOM node I think just uh, use them too inside our projects yeah. and uh, uh, that's uh, these are great tools and still they do not solve all the problems we face every day and as for uh, the 
whole bunch of PEM tools. Uh, it's um, not just one particular uh, thing, for example, to uh, get some libraries into a project or maybe to optimize uh, scripts uh, or so something, but it is the methodology to um, name that files to uh, even the designers who uh, creating uh, PSD files for us, they uh, tried to work with these tools and uh, for prototyping pro purposes and uh, they say it's uh, much easier to work with that level of abstraction where you don't need to think uh, on in terms of text, text but uh, in terms of the uh, separate blocks uh, providing some uh, functionality and um, when you're going to move one block from one place into another you uh, never think about uh, if it will uh, will be broken in any way because uh, you are sure that everything is written in a form when um, it is incom incom encapsulated inside and that's um, kind of maybe web components but um, it works right now in any browser and um, actually it's uh, much more flexible than web components itself For uh, example, you're uh, developing some similar projects and uh, for sure they will have uh, something in common. For example, uh, each of them will have some login screens uh, or maybe uh, logotypes, links, all this stuff which is uh, the same from project to project. and. Um, I think uh, you don't need to reinvent uh, the wheel each time. You may uh, put uh, these common solutions you used to work with into a separate library or maybe a lot of libraries and uh, use them on the projects uh, just adding some uh, particular features. That's the first point. And the second point is uh, the idea of independent blocks uh, will uh, help you no matter uh, if you work alone or it's a 
big team because uh, when your mm, manager asks you to uh, change something on a project uh, you will be able to do it very fast and um, that uh, layer of abstraction when you um, start uh, thinking of your project in terms of blocks it's uh, very helpful too uh, because uh, today because of for example i6 uh, you need to uh, create the layout uh, with the help of uh, tables and uh, um, you will think that okay my menu is a table with rows and cells and there is maybe some divs inside of it to provide uh, paddings or so and uh, the next day you get uh, uh, statistics that there is uh, no any users with IE6 and today your project may be built with the uh, uh, more semantic layout and uh, uh, at that point you don't need to think okay now I'm going to change a lot of text you're going to that particular block with the menu and say that it is just new layout and everything works I'm sure there are <laughs> a lot of uh, other uh, things that uh, each one can find useful for for him while developing uh, actually I'm a designer and I can completely correlate what you have said like following the similar methodology in Photoshop uh, for organizing layers and other uh, groups because like when, when I first started off uh, I used to find it really hard and difficult to read someone else's work and they don't at all organize and have like a whole stack of like 100 to 200 layers though Photoshop has something called like uh, auto select where if you just check that option and you click on like a stack of layers whatever is the topmost you'll be able to select that particular layer. But still again, like if I have like 20 things overlapping onto one thing to get like some particular style, I need to go to the layers uh, stack and I need to search. But with better way of organizing that, I've always tried to uh, group certain things, but I haven't really thought uh, like a methodology to something like a block element and modifier. But this is really kind of uh, helpful for me to implement these concepts in my design uh, work. Yeah, and uh, we were already asked about uh, how one can uh, divide uh, layout into the blocks and that will be the first answer from Varvara. She's going to uh, answer the questions about uh, the methodology and she will show it on the example. What's like the ideal use case for them? Like, what's the use case where I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll use them for this, it'll be amazing. Like, what's the ideal use case? Uh, we have one small site called yandex.ru and it's built with BAM. <laughs> yeah. uh. So why is Yandex the ideal use case? Okay, it, it will be a kind of spoiler, I think, but I will show you. I need to get my VPN to get into our... intranet. too slow okay it works uh, here is the site of our internal block library and uh, for example here is the block of the headers and uh, it is uh, understood that uh, when you have one um, firm style and a lot of services 
uh, they will be in somehow uh, they will have something in common but still they will be uh, quite different for one from another and in this situation uh, you can notice that we have the same logo uh, but uh, different uh, other parts of the header and inside of it there is a, a user block and it is absolutely the same and uh, I was talking just oh sorry yeah this user block is the same and uh, I was talking just about front-end but uh, it's not quite so with Node.js uh, we can write uh, server-side uh, in that same uh, block element and modify terms and um, again we can separate uh, each thing uh, into a separate folder and uh, the block uh, can know where uh, it should go to uh, find the username for example it may be the request into database or look up into cookies or something and then how to render itself and here you can see just a small variety of the headers we have and they use blocks which are inside this library and uh, all these blocks will be updated uh, in just one moment for example when we decided that uh, this drop down should looks uh, should look in a different way uh, we uh, won't uh, start to rewrite a uh, few hundreds of services we just uh, update our library and ask services to rebuild their projects and uh, every pop up or drop down on this project uh, will be changed so for uh, very big companies it's uh, dramatically different process of development and I think also it's uh, very great uh, for maybe uh, the companies uh, who uh, utilize uh, agile methodology because um, you need to make a scratch, try it, uh, use some parts of it go further, change something, move it, and uh, it uh, should be very quickly. And with this approach, uh, we have possibility to uh, give uh, designers uh, tools to create some sketches. Uh, then uh, we use the result of their work as the very uh, basic level of blocks and uh, can update or change anything on the next level and uh, the idea here is that um, it doesn't matter uh, that designer uh, could possibly write something not as good as the front professional frontender would but uh, we will uh, redefine it and uh, when that prototype will be back to designer to make some changes uh, the designer will continue working with the same uh, terms uh, he used to. He don't need to uh, <coughs> parse the project from the scratch. And uh, when that project will be changed and uh, again uh, the next time Frontender will uh, work on it um, it will be again the same code base the same blocks that they all uh, used to work and um, they will talk to each other uh, uh, naming the same entities the same way and when that project uh, will be 
placed into the production and backend guy will work on some part of it again they will work in the same terms and even designer and backend guy will uh, talk to each other with the same terms again now what we know that you Uh, when um, we um, look at them as a methodology, uh, I think it is rather good for just any case. But uh, when you are trying to take the full stack, it is uh, not easy. For example, for developers who used to work with uh, Windows uh, to switch into console, it has quite uh, high learning curve it uh, uh, to make uh, sites built on the full stack working with uh, some dynamic data we need node.js on the server and uh, these kind of things so that's like um She could take just naming convention and stop at that point, and uh, it will be enough for such uh, small, tiny websites. Because yeah, it, it seems like the, there is a it, with a methodology like that's right. I agree. Probably everyone should be using some type of methodology like that. I think for learning the tools, there is like that learning curve which you did say. But I think um, there there seems to be like a, a kind of like a tipping. don't have uh, any uh, particular questions about just what I have been showing I think it's uh, Varvara's time to answer other questions about methodology <laughs>